everybody, my name is Maddie, and welcome back to another group of Bridezilla stories. Another little bunch of them. I'm scared. <laughs> everybody buckle your goddamn seatbelts. We're starting off with kind of a big one today. And our first story comes from r slash wedding shaming. This is from Indigo Flirp. Wear a wig, cover tattoos, and sign a contract. Yikes. And the formatting is like a side scroll. So I'm going to do my best with screenshots and everything. It's just really weird. My friend, Laura, 34 female, is getting married in April 2024. She asked me, 35 female, to be a bridesmaid. I have known her since college and her fiance, James, is a great man, so I happily agreed. We began planning everything, having multiple meetings to make sure we are all up to date on all plans. She is a bit of a neat person and very organized. She made all five bridesmaids and her maid of honor a binder of our duties and we put in information about the wedding for future reference. She wants us to use it as a guide for our weddings. If we aren't married, <laughs> what? We keep track of appointments, vendors, etc. Pretty standard stuff. But that's not all that's in there. There is a section of events where we are required to give a gift on the list of acceptable gifts for that event, such as a bachelorette party requires a gift of at least $100 and includes bags, shoes, clothes, etc. Wedding shower is a required gift minimum of $50 and some type of, quote, expensive alcohol. One of the biggest issues our required look. We got this on Christmas. Here is where I started to backpedal and want to walk away. I have very thick but fine hair. I keep the sides shaved down and the top and back long, like halfway down my back, which helps my migraines. I also have an Eeyore tattoo and a bear paw print tattoo that show. I also just had bariatric surgery, so I'm working on losing weight. I also have glasses. This is relevant. Below is her list of musts. One, no visible tattoos. Must be removed or covered with makeup. No jackets or long sleeves to cover them. Two, full head of hair. No shaved sides or back. Must have a wig professionally put on if haircut is not acceptable. Three, hair must be blonde or black. I will tell you what color is best for you. Four, hair and makeup is to be done by my MUA and hairstylist. MUA $100, stylist depends on hair length and if it needs cut. 5. Hair cannot too short. It must be able to be braided. Also, if your hair is too long, like to your waist, it will need to be cut. Nails, including toes, will need to be done professionally by my nail salon ladies in my approved color and length. She gave me the name, but I don't want to put it in. 7. You must fit into a size 8 dress. I don't want to see tents too big, or rolls too tight. Dresses have been ordered at size 8 only. 8. No jewelry, including wedding bands or engagement rings. 9. No brown eyes. That's James and my color, so you will need to get contacts. Blue is required. No harsh tans. No visible scars. Same rule applies. No eyeglasses. Get contacts or go without for the day. <laughs> Another issue is, in our last meeting, she passed out a bill for each of us to pay. It included the dress slash shoes we would wear, $850. Nail fee, $150. She is pooling the money to pay for them to do our nails. A binder fee of $75, the ones she made us carry around. Catering fee, $200 per plate. An entourage fee, $100. We go everywhere with her. Hotel fee for the weekend, 326 and the final fee, 400 to be a bridesmaid, or 500 maid of honor. The final kick in the pants was the contract. 14 pages, front and back, of everything we are required to do. Like not getting pregnant, attend meetings and events, constantly communicate, etc. We must take constant pictures so someone can make photo albums of everything. Each person must plan an event that is not at their house or anyone's house. It can be for one or both of them. Food and drinks must be served. We will also follow the gift requirements for each said event. Failure to follow the contract could lead to a fine or dismissal from going to the wedding. They aren't having a destination wedding. It's here in our city at a park with dinner at the hotel. She wants us at the hotel so we can be close if she needs us. 
I tried to explain that I can't afford this and she told me I had to figure it out. I figure she lost a bridesmaid. Me. Update. I am not doing the wedding. She is mad, but I don't care. I, okay. If this, let's assume that this is all, all true. Let's assume it's all true. Um, what the fuck? I would, I'm genuinely concerned for this woman's mental health. Like, it's not even like, you're so control crazy, la 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 la. Like, no, like, I'm genuinely, genuinely, what planet has she come from? What's going on here? No brown eyes? No brown eyes. Because that's what you're going to be doing when you look at photos in a wedding or whatever, like 20 years down the road, you're looking back, you're like, ugh, I can't believe other people have the same color eyes as you and your groom. That's terrible. No glasses? What the fuck? And the hair thing is ridiculous. That is so insane to me. Um, I have visible scars on, on my hands. They're, you know, only noticeable if you're, like, looking for them, but they're there. I wear glasses, I have brown eyes, and I have, I have pretty goddamn long hair. Um, so already there would be a problem here. Why did she ask actual living people to be in her wedding and not just like hire actors that fit the exact vision that she has like why she doesn't want a wedding it sounds like she wants to shoot a goddamn movie what is going on here i mean i would have been out when you know she mentioned that you know we have to carry like binders and then we should use them as inspiration for our weddings if you aren't married yet she's insane She's fucking crazy. She's charging these people out the ass to what? Hang out with her? To hang out with her. Quick warning about the next story. Um, it does contain themes of child abuse. Um, apparently child neglect. And uh, we do discuss rape in the following story. So please keep that in mind. And if you need to click off here, I hope to see you again in another video. Um, take care of yourself first, please, please, please. All right, here we go. All right, our next one comes from r slash wedding shaming as well. And this comes from hot underscore bug underscore 7369. And this does have an NSFW warning. I don't even know how to summarize how bad this wedding was. Eight to nine years ago, my former coworker, Kay, calls me up out of the blue and wants to reconnect. I liked her just fine while we worked together, so I agreed. We meet up at Applebee's, and she asked me to be one of her bridesmaids. That should have been my first red flag. I haven't spoken to her in almost a year at that point, and the next time I speak to her was when she asked me to be a bridesmaid. I was caught off guard, but also surprised and flattered, so I ignored my instincts and agreed. I sort of knew her fiancé, as he was a customer at the store we both worked at. The only thing I knew about him was that a few years prior, he had allegedly, according to Kay, been tricked into sleeping with a minor. As the minor was in a bar, so he assumed she was of legal age and slept with her, but she was actually slightly underage. I never commented on the situation, but it always sounded fishy to me. This will be important later. Yes, um, when a grown man sleeps with a teenager, that is, that is fishy. Anyway, on to the wedding events. The first cringy occurrence was that the bridal shower turned out to be a MLM event. The maid of honor apparently sold jewelry for some multi-level marketing scheme company, and they basically coerced everyone into buying overpriced jewelry for the wedding at the event. The second cringy occurrence was that the bride offered to pay for all of our bridesmaid dresses, which I appreciated, but then she bought them on Wish, so none of them fit and they look terrible. We ended up going to TJ Maxx and picking out something else a week before the wedding. But the biggest issue came on the day of the wedding. I arrived at the venue, a public park, three hours before the ceremony as instructed. Everyone is setting things up in the little shelter house, including a line of slow cookers that her aunts brought to cook the 40 pounds of pulled pork that her uncle gifted her for her wedding. That was apparently the wedding meal. 40 pounds of pulled pork from her uncle. I love pulled pork. That doesn't sound too bad, actually. <laughs> there weren't enough folding chairs for the guests because they didn't rent any chairs, and they didn't even think about seating in a public park where there is no seating available when planning the wedding. 
so we had to call her relatives to ask them to bring their own chairs. The bride didn't hire a photographer, and she didn't know anyone with a decent camera, so she had her brother take pictures of all of us with his flip phone. You'd think this would mean pictures would go by fast, but nope, still took three hours. At the ceremony, the best man didn't know he was the best man until we were all standing in position because the groom had apparently gotten into a fist fight with the best man the week before and uninvited him from the wedding. When the ceremony began, they had one of her relatives give a touching little speech about honoring those who had passed on into the next life and weren't able to be there with them that day, followed by playing See You Again by Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth on the bridesmaid's phone, which was made significantly less touching when it started loudly playing a Spotify ad immediately after the song ended. The bride insisted on doing yet more pictures after the ceremony, and by this time, we were done. All of her relatives had eaten the, full, the 40 pounds of pulled pork. There was nothing left for us to eat. We hadn't eaten all day, and I was starving and cranky. But the absolute clincher of the whole day was when the bride said, well, that's all right. We shouldn't be here too long anyway. We technically aren't supposed to be here. I asked if she hadn't made a reservation for the park space and she said no, they hadn't because her new husband wasn't supposed to be at the park. I asked why. She explained the story she told me before about her husband sleeping with a woman who he assumed was of age in a bar. Apparently, that was a lie. He apparently statutory raped the babysitter of his two young sons knowing she was 13 and her parents pressed charges when they found out, as they should. And yep, you guessed it, he wasn't supposed to be at the public park or any public park because he was on the sex offender registry. I walked out. I picked up the nice bottle of wine that I'd bought as their gift, got in my car, and left. I haven't spoken to her since. Edit. Mention this in the comments. Some commenters have asked me to add this to the main post. She had a five-ish year old boy going into the marriage. She told us on the day of the wedding that she was pregnant with a girl. She also told us after she admitted the story about the 13-year-old that she and her husband had already gotten married at the courthouse a year prior because part of the terms of his parole was that he wasn't supposed to live with children he wasn't related to, so they had to be legally married for him to live with her and her kid. Another edit. Per a few very reasonable requests from commenters, I changed slept with to statutory raped when discussing the story of the 13-year-old girl. You are all absolutely correct. I was trying to soften my language, but let's call a spade a spade. 13-year-olds cannot consent to having sex with adult men. It was statutory rape. That was fucking horrible. I'm sitting here, like, in shock, looking out my window, wondering, 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 wondering. First of all, obviously, he's horrible. And, you know... Let's all hope he gets hit by a bus or something. But she, knowing, she knowingly married a child rapist so that he could stay in her house with her child, where her child fucking lives and sleeps and is supposed to be safe. And she is going to willingly have a daughter with this man? A daughter? Who very well may someday be 13. That is fucking horrible and disgusting. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she's terrible. I am glad you got out of there, OP. Um, this, let this be a lesson to us all to always listen to our instincts and not say yes to things when we know that something's fishy. Even if we end up hurting the other person's feelings a little bit, that's okay. Um, safety first, everyone. Safety first. Alright, let's lighten things up with a just straight up crazy one. Alright, this one comes from Am I the Asshole? And it is AITA for refusing my sister-in-law in her request to baptize her child during our wedding. I dated my fiancé for five years before we tied the knot. I have a great relationship with his parents and siblings, except for one of his sisters. The golden child of the family. She's annoying, but whatever, it's fine. I've been able to keep out of her way, for the most part, as her family lives out of state. So my boyfriend and I got engaged and everything is going great, planning with both sides of the family. Until sister-in-law at the last minute requests that she and her family baptize their daughter during our ceremony. 
She'd even called our priest and he'd agreed to combine the ceremonies. Um, what? I said no for several reasons, none of which were good enough, and I was apparently being unreasonable and selfish. My reasons were Catholic and weddings are usually an hour, tacking on a baptism would either make the ceremony longer or take time away from our ceremony. Our wedding was an evening affair and the reception was only going to be about two hours. So even if it lasted 30 minutes, baptism and their photos afterwards, they would cut our reception down to an hour and a half. Her wedding slash reception was an all day affair, FYI. The baby would be in the church, in the wedding photos and at the reception. So seriously, who would focus on another wedding couple when there's a first grandchild nearby? Her reasoning. All the family would already be gathered for our wedding and it'd be a good time for them, her family, to have it. And shouldn't I be accommodating for, to a first time mother? They'd only invite about four to six additional people to our wedding, strangers to us, and it'd be easier on them because we'd already have the venue and food for their short guest list, which we'd be paying for. It's the first grandchild and important to her family. I guess I wasn't a part of it yet and not included in this sentiment. My fiance didn't have a strong preference either way, but supported how I felt on the matter. I stuck to my guns and said no, but we offered a compromise. We said we'd delay our honeymoon trip and they could have the baptism the next Sunday morning during mass. I thought it was a great compromise, but sister-in-law was not thrilled. So that's what we ended up doing, but she still brought baby girl in full white satin lace to the wedding and was front and center in all the photos. And they brought their four to six extra friends for, to our reception without asking first. We never made a fuss about it. My issue is this. I still get crap from this sister-in-law and it's been a couple of years since the wedding. Snippy remarks made when it's only the two of us around, passive aggressive comments in front of others, Bradzilla labels tossed my way, a cold shoulder when I try to talk to her at holidays, etc. Like seriously, it was years ago and she basically got what she wanted so why am I being treated like an asshole? Am I the asshole? Edit to address repeated questions. When this first came up, I said no. My husband took over handling this completely from there. He worked with his mom and sister. I didn't have to deal with anything besides initially saying no. Husband was point of contact after that. Granted, we didn't know if she'd still show up with her guests for the reception or knew what her daughter was dressed in. But at that point, we were having a good time at our reception and were focusing on ourselves. I only figured out she'd invited her friends when I saw the photos later. I didn't know if she ever offered to pay because I wasn't in the conversation at this point. It happened right before our wedding and hubs and mother-in-law didn't want me to stress out. It was a short evening reception with a buffet. We had about 200 people total. Her passive aggressive comments in the following years were very subtle. If she said something rude and if I or my husband called her out on it, which he did, she'd claim we simply misunderstood her. The rude comments or snubs she gave me directly in private, she'd also claim I misunderstood her or was blowing an innocent comment out of proportion. My husband has stood up for me, but our interactions with her are brief and only once or twice a year. So I'm not dedicating a lot of time to trying to have a great relationship with her. She's a narcissist and I refuse to give her any drama or feed her addiction. It just struck me as odd that she's hung on to this incident for so long. And I began to question if I might have inadvertently been the asshole, hence this post. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Um, OP is absolutely not the asshole there. Um, I would have said no too. Like, she's, sister-in-law is just trying to piggyback off of you, eh? And I personally don't really support, like, forcing religion on children, on babies. Babies who have, like, zero concept that they have even, like, a body to begin with. Um... So yeah, no, I would, I would have said no. <laughs> I think it's perfectly reasonable to tell her no. I wouldn't have gone to the baby's baptism either. I would just like cut all contact there. But yeah, Opie, not the asshole. Perfectly reasonable. And I'm glad that your husband sticks up for you. That's, that's good. I'm glad he defends you. You got a good one right there. Okay, all these stories have been crazy and say no style. And... <laughs> I have once again reached my limit. 
also on top of that, it's it's just been a tough week. I can't take any more. Jesus. All right. Um, that is it from me. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Leave me your opinions and anything you think I may have missed out on commenting on in this video. Um, yeah, that is, that's it. I'm out of here. Um, until next time, take care of yourself and have a good one. See ya.